Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 78 of Comics and Variety. If you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified when I post new videos, and for the sake of YouTube search algorithm, please do hit the like button. Now, before we move on to today's comic book, I want to let you know that uh, you should come back a week from now because I will be announcing a, uh, a contest for a free comic book. Uh, so, to find out how to enter, come back about oh, next Thursday. Okay, moving on to the comic book BB Free. Uh, BB Free is written by Gabby Rivera. Sometimes I dance alone in my apartment. <laughs> uh, you probably recall that uh, Rivera was hired by Marvel to write the comic book America, which was a disaster both in the way the story was told and also in terms of sales. Uh, and now she has been hired by Boombox Comics to uh, write this one, showing once again that when you are a committed social justice warrior, failure is rewarded, as long as you keep the SJW faith. Now in this story, B.B. Free is a teenager who lives in this socialist commune, but wants to venture out into the big wide world and do a radio show about her adventures. But her dad won't let her, and he repeatedly asks her to just be a good girl, which is no doubt one of the greatest injustices ever. Um, B.B. Free wants to produce her radio program with another female character called Chulita Exacta. And of course, the two of them are besties. And according to B.B. Free, Chulita is the smartest, most loving person on the planet. Eventually, they get the radio program going. And right off the bat, the first episode, they are just amazing at it, even though they have absolutely no experience at it. Um, perhaps Rivera should retitle this comic book, uh, B.B. Mary Sue. And here is Chalita telling, and right after that, here is Chalita telling B.B. that they both did amazing at the radio program. Hey, it's two SJW tropes in one, a Mary Sue and emotional validation. Oh, look, another one, approved body type. We've hit the trifecta. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Another and probably bigger problem is that uh, what appears in the pages of this comic does not follow from the premises of the story. Um, for example, here is the premise about the world that B.B. Free lives in. Alrighty, starting with the third dialogue box on that page. I live here, Gainesville, right at the booty bottom of the fractured states of America. And the wildest part about the Florida Islands is that it used to be one whole state, but then there was a whole plague. For real. 200 years ago, Mother Nature snapped. She hit the world with a plague that ate greed. The 1% was her appetizer. Then another 60% of the population till the whole world stood still. The chaos killed millions and crushed capitalism. That system that let people worship money more than the earth, FYI. I know, so gross, right? Yeah, that would be the gross thing about that scenario, uh, capitalism. The weather she sent was so wild it changed the face of the planet forever. Everyone was left scrambling to survive. It's kind of cool knowing that, at least in my opinion, Mother Nature was tired of that good girl crap too. And now B.B. lives in a socialist paradise where everyone's needs are met, except apparently her need for freedom, which her dad wants to deny her. But we'll come back to that. So nearly 60% of the human population is gone, along with the top 1%. Um, among that top 1%, and even among that 60%, in, in the real world, of course, there are going to be a lot of in innovators and investors, people who uh, produce a lot of new inventions, and you know, in, this, uh, in this comic book, they are now lost. Um, among that 60%, there is going to be a lot of knowledge about the intricate processes that make technology and really everything else happen, and that will be lost, too. Um, so BB probably won't have those headphones, uh, there probably won't be these radio towers, and take a look at this very advanced tech that uh, Chilita has, uh, from her computer screens to her high-tech wheelchair. A lot of that stuff doesn't yet exist, and it almost certainly wouldn't if 60% of the population was wiped out. Indeed, if, if that much of the population is eliminated, the future won't look like this. Uh, it will probably look more like this. Uh, she and her dad won't be living in an ecopod. Uh, more likely, they'd be living in this kind of a dwelling. Furthermore, B.B. won't be worrying about making a radio program or about gaining her freedom. She'd be worrying about where her next meal comes from. Um, you certainly won't be having all of this great food here to choose from. 
Oh, um, and, and that alligator she is riding, um, she wouldn't be riding it. She'd be killing it and eating it. Then, of course, because this is written by Gabby Rivera, poor BB must be oppressed by the patriarchy. She wants to go out on her own as she is 15 years old, and in this world there is something called the 15 free. But her dad won't let her. He wants her to be a quote-unquote good girl. You know, who talks to their 15-year-old daughter like that? I mean, that's for very young kids. I tell my three-year-old son to be a good boy right now, but I probably won't be using that phrase beyond, I don't know, age seven or eight, you know, like most parents. But anyway, getting back to the premises here, how can you have a socialist paradise and patriarchy? According to SJW Thought, and I use that term uh, loosely here, patriarchy is caused by capitalism, and it, of course, in turn, re reinforces capitalism. So if in this world capitalism has been wiped out, how can B.B. Free be the victim of patriarchy? Patriarchy shouldn't exist. Her dad should be a more feminist, more enlightened man. Yet somehow he's not. Um, it, just, it just doesn't seem plausible. I mean, it's not how our glorious future is supposed to look, right? I mean, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that social justice warriors like Gabby Rivera can never be happy. Like most SJW, she has to find a way to be oppressed. But then, what do you expect from someone who bases a comic book on the premise that 60% of the human population has been wiped out and actually thinks that that is cool? Alrighty, that music means that it is time for Hogs Headlines, all the news that I want to talk about. Dateline, is that a fish in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? In recent weeks, some major storms have caused thousands of fat innkeeper worms, yes, that's a real thing, to wash up on Drake's Beach in California, also known as the penis fish. It heavens to Betsy! Wow, um, you know, even George Takai at the peak of his fame needed more than a year to see that many Johnsons. Hello. Anyway, uh, these ahem, fish are something of a delicacy in places like Korea and China. <laughs> of course they are. Well, at least environmentalists haven't blamed the washing up of penis fish on global warming. This is all wrong. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with... How dare you! Wow. Uh, this went off the rails fast. Okay, that's all for now. Until next time, have a very nice day.